Well, when you have a lockdown situation and you are, you know, even if, if, if you're already in an abusive situation at home and th that lockdown happens, that's going to intensify. You know, tempers are flaring, mm -hmm. there's stress, you can't get out, you know, especially if there's a job loss, there's no separation there. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're stuck with that abuser. So of course that's going to escalate. We knew that when um, the lockdown started that that was going to happen. So at that time, we switched gears. We had to switch gears. Um, and this, all of the staff had to do 12-hour shifts at the shelter. There was a significant increase in, in clients coming forward, victims coming forward. It's sad to say that it never stops, you know. It's happening every day. We, we have a pretty full shelter at this point. We're still utilizing hotels. Normally, when it's before COVID, we would see certain times of the year, you know, during the holidays, during the summer months, that there would be an uptick in people coming forward. Um, it doesn't seem to have slowed down <laughs> since, since COVID. It, it just has, has remained. It became pretty crazy at a couple points, um, but it has remained about the same. If we have a client who's fleeing, a lot of times they're fleeing with nothing. They're taking themselves, their children, and they're running. We get them into the shelter, they have nothing. So we provide them clothing, we provide them all of their personal care items. Um, of course, we have to have cleaning supplies for the shelter. Um, we have to have non-perishable food. You know, we feed, we feed the residents. We have, if we have clients in hotels, of course we have to provide them with all these same services. The services are the same if they're in a hotel. You know, we would provide them if they need bus tickets. If there's a conflict that we can't transport, we provide them bus tickets. So, so we're providing them. We have to purchase their medications if they don't have insurance. So there's, there's many things that we do with donations. In the outreach counties, it's the same. You may have somebody who um, is, is coming in uh, and may decide not to go to shelter, but they need food or they need personal care items at home. We're going to work with you whether or not you decide to leave or not. You come to us, we're going to be here when you're ready, but we can, we can let you know about our services and how we can help you to escape that situation. And once you're a client of hopes, you're always a client of hopes. So we're gonna, we're gonna stay there with you. We're gonna help you through it. Because of COVID, cleaning supplies have become a must for us. Of course, we've had to keep things disinfected. We've had, you know, we've really gone through the cleaning supplies. Paper products are always a big thing for us. We, need, we are in constant need of paper products. And right now, that is something that we are in great need of. Um, we, you know, makeup, you know, the things that you don't normally think about, makeup, hair care products, um, you know, all kinds of personal hygiene. Uh, when it comes to clothing, I, I, during COVID, people did a lot of cleaning out of their closets. So we got an abundance of clothing. We got a whole lot of clothing. You know, we, we fix a packet up for the client when, and the children when they come in. With a, with a new little sweat outfit or something that they can put on to have something new on. All of that is always very much appreciated. You know, new little set of pajamas for kids, you know, and shoes. Shoes are always a big thing too. A lot of times they'll come with no shoes. Um, so that's always a big thing too. And I, and I don't think that right now we have a lot of like flip-flops or sandals, you know, things that they can just slide on and go. That seems to be the, the thing in the summer. We always can use blankets. We can always use sheets, pillows, you know, stuff like that. 